this is a good opportunity to at least illustrate how you approach kinematics problem solving. So this quest particular question has two parts built into it. And the question does kind of break it up into parts. So when you look at it, um, so it has a part where it's a sliding up. So that's one part where you can kind of treat it as 1D kinematics. And it has a second part where it's now in the air undergoing projectile motion. So that would be projectile motion. So as you look at this uh, uh, multi-part question, you'll see that in up through part A is 1D kinematics. Um, then B is kind of combination because you have to figure out the part in the air. And so we'll get started from the beginning here. So um, the question says a block uh, slides frictionlessly towards a ramp at a speed V1. So that'll be the initial speed. The block slides onto the ramp without bumping or otherwise sliding down, uh, slowing down. So when it's on the ramp moving up at the very bottom, it says speed of V1. The block slides up the ramp, then shoots into the air, landing on a plateau, and then uh, comes to a stop as it lands. And the rough trajectory shown. It uh, highlights the length given and the it tells you something about the angle. And I guess that's actually important, not for this uh, initial ramp up part, but it's going to be important for the trajectory motion, uh, pro projectile motion part. So angle theta with the floor while on the ramp, the block slows down with an acceleration of magnitude A. And this is an important information not to miss since um, if you somehow miss that the question gave you the acceleration, then I have seen people waste the time doing the inclined plane question. And uh, this question isn't calling for the at all. You are, you are given the acceleration and you just to use that acceleration to answer. So the question asks, asks find the speed of V2 of the block at the end of the ramp as it shoots into the air. So with the kinematics questions, really the thing to do is what do you need to know? Um, uh, what do you need to know? And what, what quantities are known? So you have read through the question, so you know the known quantities. Known quantities are, you are given the initial speed of V1, you are given the acceleration, you are given the length um, or displacement. And I think that's more or less it. Um, and you have the unknown. Usually there will be at least one unknown, which is the quantity you're trying to find, in this case, if we do. And you kind of run through the kinematics equations. This is where it's uh, very useful if you have them memorized, because then it's uh, easy, quicker for you to go through the position, expression, um, V naught T plus X naught, or the change of velocity. And the reason this would be, um, the reason this would be useful is um, you can kind of rule them out quickly that they don't give you the information you want. Uh, mainly because all these expressions rely on time and you don't have time information as one of the knowns. So it, if you have the kinematics equations memorized, it's quicker for it to uh, run, through your, um, run through the possibilities in your head. So here, really the key thing is that there is no time information here. So the, the kinematics form, of the kinematics formulas, the one that's most useful here is the V squared formula. V final squared is V initial squared plus two times acceleration times the displacement. So the one thing you should remember is that these two, they, the direction matters. So when the acceleration and the displacement are in opposite directions, then they, there should be a relative negative sign between them. So, um, so this is the equation that I'm going to use since it doesn't require time information. So let me just uh, write down a version of the equation with all the 
quantities from uh, this particular problem. So my final velocity is the V2 that I'm looking for. V2 squared is equal to initial velocity is V1 squared plus two times, we are given the acceleration. And I guess this is where I would be mindful that acceleration is going this way. So I'll just put in minus A times the displacement or the length of the ramp. Then, oh, I guess it's more or less a solved for already. Take square root of both sides and you get V2 is equal to square root of V1 squared minus 2AL. And that's it. It's, uh, uh, I think uh, most of the people in this class have a uh, reasonable familiarity with, um, especially 1D kinematics solving. It's quite a bit similar to a lot of math problems you have been doing before this class. Um, so if there are no questions, let me move on. And so part B asks, find the total amount of time the block spans on ramp and then in air. The phrasing there would make me, um, make me consider breaking up this problem into two parts because there's the part of the time that the block spends on ramp, that'll be one part, let me call that uh, T1. And then in air, this is a second and separate part because how I would handle this first part of uh, 1D kinematics motion from the second part here, the 2D projectile motion, the approach there will be completely different. So I would uh, treat this as basically two part problem on its own. So I think most of people here can do, uh, most people in this class can find out T1. Um, so for T1, you would basically go back to one of these kinematics formulas here. Um, so I guess now that I know the final velocity, this is probably easier one. And I can, uh, from this equation here, I can figure out my time T1 is equal to the difference in the velocities V2 minus V1 divided by the acceleration given. And um, if you want, you can plug in the expression for V2. And so, so that's the one part of this part B. And for the second part, um, so this is where you have to remember the projectile problem solving uh, strategy, the, what you have been using um, uh, when, you are, when we are going through the projectile motion chapters. I guess that's chapter four. So this is, uh, this is the typical setup where you have a projectile that's moving at some angle theta with some initial velocity V in this particular case, it would be V2. And you are trying to solve, quote unquote, solve projectile motion. And by solve, I mean, figure out all the relevant parameters. And that could be in some scenarios, finding the range of the projectile motion. And in, but the, um, another parameter that you might be interested in is how long the duration of time it takes it, it takes for the projectile to make that uh, travel that trajectory. Uh, so that would be finding out this delta t would be another thing. So uh, when we say solve a projectile motion, it kind of comes down to being able to analyze the whole setup and answer any questions. And what you have been doing for chapter four is you introduce a coordinate axis. So you break up the motion into independent X and Y components of the motion. So you start by saying this V2, the, the, this vector has the X component of velocity and the Y component of velocity. And you write down two separate uh, sets of kinematics equations one that deals with the X component of motion and another that deals with the Y component of motion. So the parts that deal with the X component, that they would uh, look like um, the distance X 
is given by the initial x velocity times time. And because the acceleration in the x direction is zero, uh, this is it. You get a very simple expression there. And for the y direction, the kinematics equations become a little bit more interesting. So the height y is equal to minus one half gt squared because the acceleration in the y direction is minus g plus the initial y velocity times time uh, plus initial y height. And I guess there are a few more you can write down. Um, yeah, but I think, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, for this question, I think it's, uh, uh, it's a little bit easier to use the other equation, which is the final y velocity is equal to initial y velocity minus gt. So uh, for the so so the one of the first things you do in tackling a projectile motion question is you introduce the coordinate axis and handle the x and y component of the motion separately. They are connected by really one thing, that they occur at the same time. The time variable is the one thing that connects the x and y portion of the motion together. And I think in part to C, I ask you for the, yeah, how far from the top of the ramp. Eventually there's a question that asks you for the, the range R and to answer that question, you do use the x component of motion by utilizing the time that you find from the y component, which you will do right now. So in order to find the t2, what we are doing right now is uh, solving for time t here. Uh, at uh, solving, so solve for t when projectile lens. And there's a few different ways how you can specify when the projectile lands. You can do it by saying, oh, that's when y is equal to zero, after having said y not is equal to zero. And if you have a little bit of physical intuition, you can do a little bit of a shortcut that avoids you having to deal with the quadratic equations. That would be to say uh, where the the y, final y velocity is equal to minus initial y velocity. Um, it's for a situation like this where it's a kind of a symmetry, it's a, a level ground where it lives and where it lands is the same, then you might have an intuitive feel that how fast it's going up is same as how fast it's coming down. If you have that intuition, great. You can use that little bit of a shortcut. And I'll use the shortcut right now. So that's where I'll use the second equation I wrote down and say that this is, um, so this becomes minus V2, that's the final velocity, is equal to plus V2 minus GT. So I can move this over to the left-hand side move this over to the right hand side, then I get gt is equal to 2v2 or time that the projectile spends in air is equal to um, 2v2 divided by g, or this is um, t2. And the uh, total time that the projectile spends in air would be time is t1 plus t2, or the total time that it spends on ramp plus in air. Um, and, and this is the information you can use to answer part to see where it asks about the range. Um, so I guess unless there are questions in the interstate, let me uh, leave this question here. But uh, I hope, I hope uh, projectile motion questions make sense. Um, and uh, that um, it, it is a good chunk of it. Pro so I, I can almost guarantee that I will put in some projectile motion questions. So 
uh, not necessarily this one and probably not this one, but something where you do have to think about 2D kinematics. So uh, make sure to review that and uh, be able to tackle questions that uh, deal with the kinematics in 2D. Uh, 